Today we're trying to answer the question of how demand for a certain product is affected by changes in price of a different product. We call this concept cross-elasticity of demand in economics, and we abbreviate it XED, um, the X because you know it's like crossing. It's, I think it's economists trying to be cool, but I'm not quite sure. Anyhow, so cross-elasticity of demand, also people will call this cross-price elasticity because it's talking about the price of one good versus the quantity demanded of a different good. So when you look at the formula, it's actually the exact same formula as PED, except that instead of percent change of quantity over percent change of price, it's percent change of quantity of good X, or sometimes people write good one, divided by the percent change of price of good Y or good two. Anyway, the point is a different good. The terms that we care about here are the terms substitutes and complements. And a substitute, if we think about it, a substitute is a good that you're going to use in the exact same way as the good that you're talking about. A complement is a good that you're going to use along with the good that you're talking about. So ketchup is a complement to french fries, but maybe onion rings are a substitute for french fries. Our example today, we're going to use iPhones. So let's look what might happen to some different goods and try to derive the relationship um, that might occur from this. We're going to start off with saying that there's a 10% rise in price of iPhones. And it's important that we see that on the graph for iPhones first. This isn't our completed uh, product, but it is what we want to um, think about as part of our logical progression to saying what happens to our other goods down here. By the way, in this example, it would be these goods that are product X. We, we care about what's happening to these goods because of a change in price of another product, the iPhone. So we've had a 10% change in price or an increase in price in iPhones. And as a result of that, they've lost 5,000 um, of their customers. So 5,000 of their, their people have gone away. I don't care what percentage that is. Um, all that matters for our analysis is that it's 5,000 people. 5,000 fewer people are going to buy the iPhone. So let's look what happens to some various products. Let's look first of all um, about the people who aren't going to buy iPhones. The people who aren't buying iPhones clearly are not going to buy iPhone covers. So what that means, of the 5,000 that aren't going to buy iPhones, most of those 5,000 would have bought covers. Maybe a few wouldn't. For example, I don't have a cover for my phone, but it's not an iPhone either. It's that one. Anyhow, most people are going to buy a cover for their phone, but some won't. So that means of the 5,000 people that won't buy iPhones, a large majority of these also won't buy covers. Obviously, they're not going to buy a cover if they don't buy the phone. Um, the point is that some of them wouldn't have bought the cover in the first place. Okay, so 4,950 won't buy covers, and that's going to be a 5% decrease. Negative is important here. It's going to be a 5% decrease for the sales of iPhone covers. If we do the math, so we're doing percent change in quantity demanded, uh, dem uh, divided by percent change in price. So this is going to be negative 5% divided by 10%, and the PED is going to be negative 0.5. Again, keep in mind, when we did PED, everything was absolute value. That's not true for XED, and it's not true for YED, the next one we'll study. Here, the values really matter. So make sure not to lose the negative um, or the positive. It's important to keep this. So our XED for iPhone covers is gonna be negative 0.5. Another thing people buy, I don't know, some people, I went looking for the craziest one I could find. Another thing that some people buy when they buy iPhones are, this is, it's a little, it's like an old fashioned alarm clock and you stick it into the iPhone so that when your alarm goes, it makes the big loud noise. I never liked that anyway. But anyway, I guess some people want this product. Who am I to, who am I to judge? So here, let's say that only maybe, you know, of, of all the people who buy iPhones, maybe, you know, a couple hundred or something of those are, are gonna buy this alarm and they lose a hundred, you know, uh, they lose a hundred of those alarms. Uh, they lose a hundred people who would have bought the alarm out of that 5,000. So that's only going to represent, it's going to be a smaller percentage. Therefore, when we do the math, negative 1% over 10%, we're going to get a smaller XED value. The importance of this is when we compare these two, and again, these are both going to be complements. You buy them along with an iPhone, 
you don't buy an iPhone cover if you're not buying an iPhone, I don't think. Um, both of these are complements, but what we can see is that the cover is a much stronger complement. The, the sale of the cover is much more linked to the iPhone than the sale of this is. I mean, obviously no one's buying another phone to use with this, but the point is this business is much more dependent on the iPhone than that business is. This business hopefully is selling some other things too. Okay, these products over here, these are alternatives. These are gonna be substitutes. So again, we're seeing that 5,000 people are not gonna buy iPhones. The question is, are they just gonna go without a phone? Are they gonna keep their old phone? Are they gonna um, you know, wait till another phone comes out? We don't know. But if they're in the market to buy right now, they don't wanna wait or anything like that, we can assume that because a Samsung is most close to the iPhone, then this is a little Nokia. I don't know if you can see, but it does have, you know, it's got icons for Facebook and stuff. So it's got some internet functionality, but it's clearly not, you know, a touchscreen and as smart of a smartphone as, as those two are. So we can assume that most of these 5,000 people who aren't gonna buy the iPhone see the Samsung as a good alternative. So they're just gonna buy the Samsung instead. So most of these 5,000 are going to buy, so 4,900 of them are going to buy the Samsung. So that's going to be a large percentage increase in the sales of Samsung. There's one thing I should note here. You're seeing that 7 and 2, they add up to 9%. Remember, this is 7% of what Samsung was selling. It's got nothing to do with the 2% here. This is 2% of what Nokia was selling. We don't know what it was, and it's not important. The point is more people are gonna to switch to what we call the stronger substitute. A few people, 75, are gonna buy the Nokia. That's a smaller percentage. Again, when I do the math, we get positive 0.2, positive 0.7. And again, this indicates that it's a stronger substitute than the Nokia is, even though they're both substitutes. I think it's important to note that some people won't buy either of these. Assume these are the only two alternatives. There's no other phones. Some people, they're diehard iPod, uh, I'm sorry, iPhone users. They don't want a Nokia, they don't want a Samsung, they don't see them as good alternatives. So maybe they're just gonna go without and maybe they will you know, wait a few months until a cheaper iPhone is out there or maybe they'll use an older phone or just, I don't know, use the internet or you know, uh, uh, Facebook and things like that for people to communicate. Anyhow, we just don't know, but it is important to note out that some of those people won't actually end up switching. They'll just do nothing, okay? Here too, it is important to note the math that these three numbers that I've come up with, they do equal the 5,000 that we showed here that were lost. Whereas over here, I actually, my numbers come out to greater than 5,000. That's because it's possible that some people would buy a cover and an alarm at the same time. It's economic, so you know we have to show it on a diagram. So let's see how we can see that. This would be the same diagram that we saw previously. I've gotten rid of some of the numbers because they just don't really matter for how I'm going to do my analysis. And that's always key. Think about how your analysis is going to go and only include the information that you're going to find useful. So here I'm showing the price went up and quantity demanded decreased. And now we're going to look at the effect on our one, two, three, four products. So we saw the decrease in quantity demanded for iPhones, and that's going to cause a shift to the right in Samsung's. At the same price, we're going to see quantity increase at all prices. And I've noted the plus 7% on there. Remember when we talked about when we, shift the, uh, when we shift the demand curve? That's a change of the A variable, but more importantly, it's a change, it shifts because of a change to a non-price determinant of demand. Remember one of those, I think the second one we talked about was the price of another product. So for Samsung, their demand is increased because of a change to the price of a different product. And of course, that's true all the way through here. Likewise here, this product, its demand has shifted to the left, it's decreased because of the price of a different product. There is some use, if I were doing this as a, you know, as a IB question response, there is some use in trying to show that this shift was 7%, which is greater than this shift of 1%. But to be honest, it's not all that useful, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. So again, we see these two shifting to the right by 7 and 1%, and we see these two shifting to the left, again, at the same price uh, by negative 5%. This is a place where I think that negative is important to include, and by negative 2%.
I'd like to represent this on a number line as well. And what we can see is that the further that our PEB values get from zero, so they're, they're going to be stronger or weaker. So for complements, remember this was negative 5% divided by uh, 10%, so it was negative 0.5. Um, that's, a, that's further from zero than negative 0 0.2. So it's a stronger complement than the alarm was. Likewise, Nokia was going to be positive 0 0.1 versus Samsung positive 0 0.7, which means that the Samsung is a stronger complement. We do get a question sometimes of, well, what if you change the price of one product and nothing happens to the change of demand? of another product, actually it usually goes like this. What if the calculation comes up to be zero? Well then, what we're saying is, I changed the price of iPhones, and whatever other product that we're looking at, there was no change as a result of the change in price of iPhones. So I would wager that, for example, whiteboard markers, there is no relationship between whiteboard markers and smartphones. I'm not gonna buy more or less of these because I buy more or less smartphones. So our calculation there would come out to be zero. And the important point is that we're pointing out at that point that they have no relationship. Of course, that takes me to one of my favorite economics jokes, except I think I just made it up. Um, how did one economist break up with the other economist? They told them that their XED value was zero. All right, have a good day.